Many animals can regrow lost body parts. Starfish can grow new arms. Newts and salamanders can grow new legs. Lizards can grow new tails. And planaria, a type of flatworm, can even grow new heads. This process, known as regeneration, relies on stem cells. But regeneration in humans is limited. Young children can grow new fingertips, and our livers are pretty good at growing back. Yet, for the most part, our stem cells just heal injuries. They don't replace missing pieces. Regenerative medicine is a new field that aims to use stem cells to repair damaged tissue that can't heal itself. Many tissues in our bodies contain pockets of stem cells that can heal injured tissue, but they are difficult to isolate and grow in culture. Scientists are looking for ways to activate these cells while they are still in the body and coax them to go beyond their natural healing abilities. Some existing drugs may already be activating stem cells. A few antidepressant medications stimulate the growth of new neurons in the brain, and these neurons most likely originate from stem cells. Scientists may be able to develop new drugs that will activate other types of stem cells to heal damaged tissue. Another approach to regenerative medicine is to grow stem cells in a lab and transplant them into patients. Building on technology developed for bone marrow transplants, scientists are developing new ways to use somatic stem cells. They are also looking at embryonic stem cells and induced pluripotent stem cells, both of which can give rise to any type of cell in the body. Embryonic stem cells and induced pluripotent stem cells live indefinitely in culture, where they can be grown by the millions. By giving these stem cells certain signaling molecules, scientists can differentiate them into beating heart cells, muscle cells, nerve cells, and more. Someday, scientists may transplant differentiated cells like these into patients, where they will grow new, healthy tissue. Tissue engineers are already growing patches for repairing damaged heart tissue. In animals, they are working on growing whole hearts, livers, lungs, and kidneys. Stem cell transplants show promise for treating spinal cord injuries. In rats, neural stem cells were injected into damaged spinal cords, where they wrapped around injured nerve cells and improved the rat's ability to walk. Drawing on the gene-targeting technology used for making transgenic mice, scientists are developing a new kind of gene therapy. First, doctors isolate cells from a patient with a genetic disorder and create induced pluripotent stem cells. Next, the defective gene is replaced with a functional copy. Finally, the cells are differentiated into the proper cell type and put back into the patient. This process has been used to cure mice of sickle cell anemia, suggesting this approach may also work in humans. Stem cells are helping us learn about cancer. Like stem cells, cancer cells grow rapidly and they remain undifferentiated. In fact, some tumors may actually be stem cells that are growing out of control. If we learn how stem cell growth and differentiation are regulated, then we may be able to develop new drugs for treating cancer. The possibilities for stem cell therapy seem limitless. As researchers continue to explore the factors that control stem cell behavior, they are discovering the true potential and limitations of using stem cells for therapies.